So in this video, we shall discuss uh, system properties in terms of impulse response. Uh, if you remember, uh, in the initial uh, stage of my videos, we have discussed properties of system, right? Uh, there, the system was actually in terms of input-output relationship. In the sense, the system was something like uh, transformation of input x of t will give us output y of y of t. Uh, if this is a continuous time system, if it is a discrete time system, transformation of input x of n is equal to y of n. Right? What do you mean by this? We have a system which does some transformation t. For this system, we are applying x of t as input and y of t is the system output. Okay. We discussed there uh, like 5 to 6 properties uh, on system based on input output relationship something like this. Now uh, we have like 4 properties here memoryless causal stability and uh, invertibility are also called as deconvolution. Uh, here we are not discussing this with respect to something like input output relationship but we are discussing with respect to the impulse response of the system. Say I had I don't have a input output relationship, but instead I have system in terms of impulse response. In that case, uh, I can check for uh, system properties like memoryless causal stability. Okay, we shall discuss one by one. First is memoryless. A system is said to be memoryless. A system is said to be memoryless if it satisfies the condition h of n is zero for n not equal to zero. If the system is discrete time system, okay, and h of t is equal to zero for t not equal to zero, if it is a continuous time system. So what do you mean by this? It is nothing but say I have a system h of uh, an impulse response h of t, say something like this. This is at t is equal to zero. Uh, sorry, this is n. I will consider discrete time. This is at n equal to zero, n equal to minus one, n equal to one. I have 1, 2, 3. So this is my impulse response h of n. Okay. If whether this impulse response h of n satisfies this condition, and what is this condition? h of n is equal to 0 for n not equal to 0. For n not equal to 0, it should be 0. So n not equal to 0 in the sense apart from 0, other values of n. So I have minus 1 which has some sample, I have 1 which has some sample. Okay, so this condition does not satisfy here because I have samples uh, in other than zeros values of n. Right, so this, this system has memory actually. This is the definition for memoryless. If this condition does not satisfy, then the system has memory or we call it a system has, system is not memoryless. Okay, so if I, if the system is something like this, uh, uh, if the impulse response is something like this, at n equal to 0, I have some amplitude a, then this condition satisfies, right? It, h of n is 0 for n not equal to 0. So other than 0, all values of n is 0, right? In that case, system is memorialized, so memoryless, okay? And the same condition holds good for h, uh, continuous time system also. So h of t equal to 0 for t not equal to 0, right? Okay. Uh, fine. Next, we shall discuss on causal. A system is said to be causal if it satisfies the condition h of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0 if the system is discrete time system and h of t equal to 0 for t less than 0 if the system is continuous time system. Uh, say an example h of n is something like this. So n it is 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So what is the condition? H of n should be 0 for n less than 0. In the sense for negative values of n, minus 2, minus 3, dot, 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 there should not be any samples. Okay. This is at, is at n equal to 0, right? So for negative values of n, there should not be any samples. If this condition satisfies, then the system is causal. Okay. If say if if the system is something like this, so minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two. This is n. This is h of n. So one, two, three, one, two, three. If if the impulse response is something like this, what do what do what is the condition for n less than zero in the sense negative values of n? h of n should be zero, but it is not zero. It has some samples for negative values of n, right? So therefore 
this is the example for what non causal system okay so there should not be any samples in the negative side of n and same thing same definition holds good if the system is a uh, continuous time system fine okay uh, next is stability a system is said to be stable if its impulse response is absolutely summable if the system is discrete time system and it is if it should be absolutely integrable if the system is continuous time system i repeat again a system is said to be stable if its impulse response h of n sh should be absolutely summable if it is discrete time and its impulse response h of t should be absolutely integrable if it is a continuous time system okay so when i say absolutely summable okay for example h of n is something like this so 0 1 2 1 2 3 and this is n so is this absolutely summable when i say absolutely summable when i sum up all the samples for n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity okay it should end up with a finite value i repeat again when i sum up all the samples of h of n starting from n varying from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, the summed up value should be finite then we call it as absolutely summable okay in this case when i sum it up it is 1 plus 2 plus 3 it is 6 right so it is a finite value in the sense it is absolutely summable therefore system is stable okay for example h of n is a, if h of n is u of n which is a unit step function so it is one everywhere for n varying from 0 to infinity now when i sum it up for n varying from minus infinity to infinity so is it absolutely summable no it goes to infinity right because at n equal to infinity so 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 till n is equal to infinity it is 1 so it is actually not summable this system will blows up it goes to infinity okay this is an example for unstable system this is not absolutely summable okay and condition is nothing but you just sum it up summation n varying from minus infinity to infinity h of n should be less than infinity okay this is actually what we say is absolutely summable okay and uh, for continuous time system it should be absolutely inter integrable in the sense if i integrate t varying from minus infinity to infinity h of t dt this should be less than infinity okay this is called as absolutely integrable when i integrate h of t for t varying from minus infinity to infinity the value integration value what you should we should get should be finite value then we call it as absolutely integrable then the system is stable otherwise it is unstable fine now so invertible and deconvolution okay uh, as we discussed in system properties in the initial videos a system is in invertible if the input to the system can be recovered from the output for example if i have an input x of n and if i feed it to a system the impulse response h of n i get an output y of n if there exists an in inverse system we call it as h i n v of n if i feed this y of n to h of n i should get back my x of n okay then the system is said to be invertible but there is a requirement that if i have h uh, if i have h inverse of n there exists an inverse system h in, if i convolve these two impulse response and inverse uh, system impulse response i should get delta of n this is the requirement okay if that is the case what happens is if i uh, x of i have an x of n this is convolved with impulse response h of n and this is convolved with the inverse system h i n v of n okay if what is the uh, requirement h inverse of n con h of n convolved with h inverse of n should end up with what delta of n and any any signal convolved with delta of n should give me x of n back that is there is this is one of the property x of n convolved with delta of n should give me x of n back okay in that case i can get back my x of n so this this concept is called as deconvolution fine so this is about 
properties of system in terms of impulse response. In the next videos, we shall take up a few problems to check these properties.